It's getting warm. <laughs> I should say it's getting warmer. It's actually been warm for quite a while now. And I like it. You know, it's this year's been challenging for me to adapt to the heat as much as I had last year or the year before, but even though the challenges come, I think with them we learn a perspective, you know, to adapt to whatever the circumstances or situation may be. We take it to our previous experience, we learn from that, we look towards some solutions, we get some ideas, and then if you're like me, you take it to God after that, and you say, okay, now that I've figured out every other opportunity I can, you know, to do something, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Usually, I don't have the right one anyways. <laughs> so you could do it the long involved way by figuring it out yourself and then taking it to the Lord in prayer or conversation. Or you could just start there, you know, and save yourself a lot of wasted time and energy by just going, I don't know, Lord, what do you want to do? I think the I don't know, what do you want to do is a lot easier than my way because I always try to figure it out. The Lord hath sent strength for thee from Psalm 68:28. The Lord imparts unto us that primary strength of character which makes everything in life work with intensity and decision. We are strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. And the strength is continuous. There are reserves of power come to us which we cannot exhaust. As thy days so shall so shall that's pretty good. As thy days so shall thy strength be. Strength of will, strength of affection, strength of judgment, strength of ideals and achievement. The Lord is my strength to go on. He gives us power to tread the dead level, to walk the long lane that seems to never have a turning, to go through those long reaches of life which afford no pleasant surprise and which depress the spirits in the sameness of its terrible drudgery. Sometimes that is the way it is. The Lord is my strength to go up. He is to me the power by which I climb the hill difficulty and not be afraid, to which I scale the mountaintops, to which I seek to reach the next level and ascend the next peak. The Lord is my strength to go down. It is when we leave the bracing heights where the wind and the sun have been about us and when we begin to come down the hill into closer and more sultry spheres that the heart is apt to grow faint. When we see how far we have yet to go and the ache on our calves begins to tell how far we have gone down and how far we had gone up. I heard a man say the other day concerning his growing physical frailty, it is the coming down that tires me. The Lord is my strength to sit still. And how difficult is the attainment? Do we often say to one another in seasons when we are compelled to be quiet? If I can only do something, I just want to do something. <laughs> when the child is ill and the mother stands by, comparatively impotent, how severe is that test? But to do nothing, just to sit still and wait, requires tremendous strength. The Lord is my strength, our sufficiency is of God. Be still and know that I am. You know, I... <laughs> I have been brought to the place of being very still. <laughs> they literally strapped me down. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was... They didn't want me moving for stitches and for IVs and everything else, so I remember being very still. But the stillness that God asks at times, and sometimes gives us the ability to do, is when you see a circumstance that you know you want to get involved in, that you say, ah, I got the answer, I could jump in there and I could make it easier for them. But are you? Did God tell you to? I know more often than not, I ask a person in the ministry that I have on the internet that, when I write or when I speak to them or when I share with them, I ask straight up, you know, did you, not did you pray about it, but did you, did God tell you to do it? Because see, we could pray and run off and do our thing. We could say we've talked to God and go off. But unless the Lord tells you to do something, 
they're all excuses to get what we want when we want it. But what the Lord tells you to do, then that's different. Because you see, if God tells you to do something, then it's up to you to either obey or disobey. So I don't care if God tells you to do something as long as God is telling you. And if you tell me, I'll say, hey, praise the Lord, go for it. You know, you're on your own, buddy. You know, <laughs> he hasn't told me to help you, but guess what? I will if, you know, I feel like God is telling me to, or if I've asked him and God tells me to help you. But that is the key. You should have that attitude. You should have that perspective. Because otherwise, you'll get involved in something where you could be following a man straight into a pit. And you'll both be sitting down there wondering how you got there. The reality is, you got to do what you got to do when God is the one telling you what to do. <laughs> Anything else, you're just playing God for a little while in your little sandbox and getting away with it until God says, Oops! And he knocks over the sandcastle. So unless you really want your house to be huffed and puffed and blown down, seek God daily on what he would have you to do, even if it means sometimes being still. Because in stillness, sometimes is your confidence. In patience, there is great reward. In allowing God to arrange the circumstances for you to come in when it is time, will give you such a glorious feeling inside that you'll shine. And isn't that what you want to do for your God and your Lord? You want to shine? <laughs> then be still or go up or go down or go on the level way or deal with the drudgery for whatsoever it is that God is telling you today that you should do